Areas contaminated with radionuclides and heavy metals number in the thousands across the United States. Current methods of excavation and pump and treat to clean these sites are expensive and potentially hazardous. New in-situ barrier technology developed by Sandia National Laboratories, plus Pacific Northwest National Laboratories' innovative methods for fielding the barrier, has produced a greener process for handling contaminated sites. A permeable reactive barrier is formed by placing two very common chemicals in an aqueous solution. The mineral apatite is formed, which naturally absorbs most radionuclides and heavy metals. Well, in this technology, the barrier is formed by injecting a solution of sodium phosphate and calcium citrate into the soil. Once it is in the soil, the natural soil bacteria biodegrade the citrate and release the calcium in a form that will react with the phosphate and you get apatite crystals formed throughout the soil. A big advantage of this technology is that the solution thoroughly wets the soil. The result is apatite crystals formed throughout the soil, but more of the solution will go into areas uh, such as cracks and areas of, of, of high porosity where more apatite will form, and those areas are where groundwater will preferentially flow. PNNL implemented field tests of the apatite barrier at the Hanford Nuclear Reservation in Washington State. The solution was either injected or allowed to infiltrate the soil. The strontium-90 contamination problem here at Hanford is, is a very difficult one to clean up because it's right next to the river and strontium-90 is leaching out into the river. The fact that we can emplace that solid appetite by actually injecting a liquid solution uh, into the subsurface so there's minimal disturbance of the ground and uh, so we inject this liquid solution either by infiltration from the surface similar to infiltration experiments that we did here or inject in groundwater. This system back here we were using to do some lab experiments of groundwater injection. So we can emplace this liquid uh, in the subsurface and then it precipitates the appetite. Once the appetite is in place, strontium-90 is treated for about the next 300 years, so it's much more cost effective. The technology is so much better than anything else uh, that we've looked at over the last decade uh, in that it's a green technology. Um, we're sequestering strontium-90 in place um, with the thought that if we can keep it where it's at, keep it out of the river, every 27 years the radioactivity is cut in half. We're deploying it in a phased manner. Uh, we started off with 300 feet. Uh, we've expanded that out now to 900 feet and we uh, plan to deploy it at 2,500 feet across the river in both deployment and uh, injection through wells and also uh, physical injection through the soil column above the wells to make sure that we have a full and complete barrier. Using this technology, we can place calcium apatite sorbent in almost any location. We're not limited in depth. The method is inexpensive. It's very simple to implement. It can be used in areas where other methods are not applicable or are financially infeasible. And the barrier can be used to sequester a wide variety of contaminants including uranium, lead, cadmium, thorium, strontium, neptunium, fluoride, and many others.